Okay, hi everybody. Welcome to Plugins A to Z in Ableton Live. We're here with Ableton Live 9 Suite, and we're going to basically be going down all of these audio effects, the stock plugins that come with Ableton Live. And since it is A to Z, there is no Z, but we're going to be starting with A, and the first A is AMP. So today we're going to be taking a look at how to use AMP to mold and change your sounds. All right, so uh, for this simple, simple little demo track that I built out of samples and loops that I found lying around my hard drive, um, I started out with a nice drum sound. So let's listen to the drums with nothing. All right, so that's Dry Drums, Volume 1 from Loop Loft, very nice drum kit. Uh, and what we'll do is drag the amp down here, which I've already done. And you can see by the name, it doesn't just say amp, it has a name here. And that's because I chose a preset to start us off with. And that's always a great idea. You know, those presets are there for a reason. They're to show you the possibilities uh, uh, with whatever the plugin is that you're using. And uh, you can see also here that AMP is brought to you by SoftTube, which is a really good company. And they're having a great sale on plugins right now until I think it's January 15th of 2015. So if, you, if you're seeing this video before then, be sure to check out their website for some really good sales. But anyway, uh, let's first start off by listening to what it sounds like and then we'll go through the different features, okay? And off. So that adds some really cool grit. Uh, you know, uh, people have criticized the amp plugin, saying that it doesn't really sound good on guitars. And I'm not sure that it does either. I'm sure it, it can sound good if you tweak it enough. But uh, I think I think of it more of a, a sound design, a sound design type tool. You know, not not something for emulating a real amplifier in the physical world, but something to use to to modify your sounds, add some really cool distortion. So let's go through and see what each part is. And a good idea is always to open up this little corner here, the info view, so that we can see what each one does. And we'll start off with what it says in the info view. We've got different amp types. We've got clean, which is a 60s classic, boost, a 60s tremolo channel, blues, a bright 70s amp, rock, a classic 45 watt amp, lead, great for metal, heavy, thick and heavy, and bass, strong, low end, and fuzz. Now these might all have real world counterparts, uh, but we're not really concerned with that today. Uh, so let's go through and listen to what each of these does. All right, and I'm gonna turn, just for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna turn the volume down a little bit, turn the dry wet all the way up. Okay, so let's start with clean and see what it sounds like. All right, let's try boost. All right, blues. Yeah, you're gonna wanna turn that treble down on blues. Let's try rock. And lead, that's pretty cool. I like that a lot. Let's try heavy, that's nice. And bass, I think that's really cool too. Now for each of these uh, amp models, we also have parameters we can control. First of all, let's take a look up here. We've got the output, and as you can see, we've got either mono or dual. Now, uh, if you think of this amp like a real world amp, you know, amps are usually mono. It's one input, one output. Um, to do stereo or dual processing, well, one will be doubling our CPU usage, like it says, but that'll also give us a stereo channel. Uh, so uh, that's up to you. It's a creative choice, but do what you will. 
the next parameter we can look at over here is gain. Gain adjusts the level of input to the preamplifier and is the primary control for the distortion amount. Higher gain settings result in a more distorted sound. So let's experiment with that. I like this bass setting. And we've got, I, I, I went ahead, we'll talk about these in a second, but the, the EQ section I put right in the middle. Let's turn this back on. If we turn the gain all the way down, there's no sound coming out whatsoever. So we need to turn this up a little bit. You can see how that works. Let's try. I liked. I liked it on uh, heavy as well. Let's try that one. Slowly moving it up. All right. So completely crushed. So that's really cool. You can play around a lot with that. Now, uh, also, like I just said, we've got our kind of EQ, our amp EQ here. We've got our bass frequencies, middle frequencies, mids, and our treble frequencies, our high frequencies. So let's go back to bass. It's a little easier to deal with. Put this about right around five. Let's start everything off at zero. Not much difference, but let's turn the bass all the way up. Turn the gain up too. All right, that's pretty cool. Let's try turning the mids up. Get that big mid in uh, mid mid range boost, and let's check the high end. Sorry to do that to you, that's pretty painful. All right, so uh, I like the sound of a lot of bass, not quite that much, but a good bit of bass and a bit of mids. Keep that treble low. I think it's got plenty as it is. Now over here, we've got the presence. It says, let's turn this down. It says, presence is an additional tone control for mid-high frequencies in the power amp stage. Its influence on the sound varies considerably depending on the amp model used but can add or subtract edge or crispness. So let's see how that works. So I'll turn the gain back up and uh, we'll start with no presence whatsoever. So you can hear how it kind of made the sound a little sharper. All right, and uh, then over here we've got the volume. Volume adjusts the output stage of the power amplifier. So um, when you're using it, says here the blues, heavy, and bass models, high volume levels can add considerable distortion. So let's try that out. So uh, those are the main parameters, but maybe the most important one, and this is all over Ableton, is the dry and wet. Uh, Ableton has just dry and wet controls on almost everything, and if it doesn't, you can use an audio effect rack to, to give it a dry and wet parameter. We'll talk about that in another video. But uh, as you can see, it says the dry wet control adjusts the balance between the processed and dry signals. This is so powerful because you can do a lot of parallel processing, and if you don't know what parallel processing is, well, it's blending in a dry signal with a wet signal uh, to 
maintain the integrity of the original sound, but also blend in, you know, smooth in a very cool affected sound. So let's go back. I'm going to just replace the boost and crunch preset here. And I'm going to start at 0%, which is all the way to the dry side. There's no effect whatsoever. And we're going to blend in the effect. So it's not going to be how it was, this pure. Because that's, that's not really pleasant to listen to, I don't think. But let's start with the dry and blend it in. So you can see it just takes a little bit to add that really cool effect. Uh, and you can play around with it too because uh, you might want to adjust the EQ, the presence, and the volume more once you're, you're doing this parallel processing on it. Alright, so there's a tour of the plugin. And uh, again, on these two sounds, my bass sound here. I just used a uh, preset called Bass Roundup. We're on the bass model. Low presence, decent EQ here. A little bit of gain, good bit of volume, and all the way wet. But again, we, we can blend it. And over here, if we turn this off, I was using a lovely, lovely e piano sound. It's just, again, a preset. Turned on the Marshmallows preset. Really warps that sound. E pianos are super fun to distort. And you can blend it. And then, finally, to give it a little bit of interesting motion and uh, spread it apart from the other sounds, especially the bass, since they're both kind of that thumpy texture, came over here and added an auto filter using the Cut O Move H preset. And when you put it all together, It becomes that strange loop. Uh, and since we're going in alphabetical order, the auto filter will be the next plugin we'll talk about. Uh, we're going to skip over the audio effects rack because that's not really a plugin. It's kind of more of a utility. We'll talk about it at some point, but I want to cover the actual effects first. All right, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.